All right, so this is immunology lecture 3. Um, what we are going to cover in this lecture is actually we are going to start the, the cellular immunology. So, what we are going to do this in this in these chapters in these lectures are that we would talk about various players, various cellular players which are taking part in the immunology. So, of course, we have talked about it before I would just keep hammering this concept home that let us say we have bone marrow house here. Remember we have a bone marrow house and with that uh, this is a bridge into the bone marrow training center. So, we have talked about it before this is bone marrow training center B cells training center and then we have thymus training center or T training center which is for the uh, T cells. But the thing which I want to talk about is that we talked about last time as well in our last lecture we have innate immunity or non specific generalized immunity or defense mechanism and we have acquired immunity or generalized not sorry not generalized, but specialized and targeted defense mechanism. And we talked about the, the characters, the players, the cells which take part in that and we said that in the immunity innate immunity we had basophils remember basophils mast cells. So, we, we made them like this that basophil and the mast cell. So, this guy had those little. So, this was the basophil mast cell then we had eosinophil. So, eosinophils had those little ears <laughs> with them. So, these were eosinophils red in color basophils are blue in color. Uh, then we have the neutrophils ne neutrophils are usually multi lobed and so then the nucleus is multi lobed not the cell. So, multi lobed nucleus so this is a neutrophil neutrophils are really bad guys and they, they really are very helpful for us. So, neutrophil and then basically the, these all are called granulocytes right. They are called granulocytes because they have granules in them they have they have little vesicles in them which are filled with granules and I hope that you know that the eosinophils are filled with red colored granules or really not red colored they pick up red color when dyed with the hematoxylin and eosin. And then the basophils are they have granules which pick up blue dye when dyed with the hematoxylin and eosine. The other thing which we talked last time was that the mast cells are actually basophils which are in the in the tissue and the basophils are circulating in the in the blood. That is very similar to monocyte and macrophage. Monocyte is inside the blood vessel, but when it comes out of the blood vessel goes into the tissue and starts working there that becomes a macrophage. So, granulocytes they have granules in them uh, neutrophil actually has light pink granules. So, it is not entirely neutral, but as compared to these guys it looks clear and so that is why it is called a neutrophil it is neutral in color. And then we have uh, if we keep looking at innate immunity then we have monocytes and again monocytes inside the blood vessels are monocytes but once they reach inside the tissue they become macrophages. And I said last time that the most scary cell or most important cell scary for the bacteria and viruses and fungi and those things the most scary cell the monster cell the badass guy is the macrophage. So, the macrophage is also present and then uh, we have dendritic cell we talked about it last time dendritic cells are really also coming from the monocytes. They also are originated from the monocytes. Now, please remember this we have talked in the lecture number 1 and I think even in lecture number 2 that in the lymph node lymph node or spleen or frankly any lymphoid tissue 
we also find dendritic cells there remember we talked about it you cannot forget these guys these are really very important guys right these are trainers for the b cells which are sitting in there uh, in the lymph nodes and they cause affinity maturation affinity maturation we'll talk more about those but sources say that the dendritic uh, uh, dendritic cells inside the lymph node so the um, what are these called these are called reticular so the dendri follicular dendritic cells follicular dendritic cells are originated from lymphoid tissue instead of the monocytes so we do have dendritic cells in the tissue normal tissue and these dendritic cells are actually a derivative of monocyte but those follicular dendritic cells are actually derivative of the lymphoid tissue so we'll talk about that today the important thing i was just trying to once again put the players here and one more thing which confuses many students is that after reading immunology after studying immunology then they keep coming across cells like kupfer cells or langerhan cells or glial cells microglial cells or or so on these are actually tissue macrophages which are sitting in various tissues of the body so these are macrophages so when we would talk about the macrophages solely about them in a lecture we'll talk about it that these when they are present in the brain tissue they are called microglia when they are present in the kidney tissue these are mesangial cells when they are present in the liver they are kupfer cells when they are in the lung they are alveolar macrophages when they are under the skin they are langerhan cells so they are the same cells they are resident macrophages inside the tissue and they are given various names so major players are these so again i'm not making the players yet for acquired let me quickly do them um lymphoid or lymph tissues so we have b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes and of course we have a player from the acquired origin of the lymphoid side working here remember the rebellion who broke away from the acquired or targeted defense and said well you know what i'm just going to go do my own defense mechanisms for my country the country being a jane will or john will that guy was i think you remember that this guy who wears an eye patch natural killer cell right so natural killer cell is actually a type of a t a type of a lymph cell but it doesn't have markers for b or t cell it is also called null cell because it doesn't have markers or cluster designations or clusters or differentiations present on it anyways it's a it's a cell from acquired immunity which has broken ranks joined the innate immunity and is working there so once again the cells we are doing now we are doing now the cellular basis of immunology or immunity so cellular not immunology immunity so cellular basis of immunity granulocytes and monocytes monocytes are not granulocytes why because we can't see their or we cannot stain their granules sitting in them so they appear clear then natural killer which is actually lymph um, um, cells or lymphoid cells but they have come in and joined in the innate immunity on the other hand when we'll talk about acquired we'll talk about b cells and t cells and again we know we have helper t cells and so on cytotoxic t cells so players here i would add a couple of more players to this i would add players which are sitting here in the bone marrow house so i would say the bone marrow cells which are working to create more cells the stem cells we would treat them as a player in our discussion as well because ultimately they also help our body produce more and more cells to defend us ourselves so bone marrow is a very important partner a very important participant in the defense mechanism so i would use that as a cell as well and we'll talk about it and similarly i would add one more cell very very important cell that cell normally is very sad because we don't talk enough about that but that cell i think we will talk enough about that will make that cell happy that cell is the the endothelial cells 